Hi, welcome to my study and welcome to those that are interested in this sort of thing. Today, this sort of thing is unboxing some large uh, Sabenza 21s, the most likely the last ones I'm going to get. Um, uh, and I will probably be doing two videos and we'll see when they upload, but it's uh, early March and uh, I've been waiting for these. Oh, I will take out my uh, receipt here. So it's, a, it's a big day here in the study. Uh, two different uh, knives to be unboxed. And uh, I think this one will be done in a second video. So I'm going to put that aside for now. Uh, let me get rid of the boxes off of the table. Um, now this knife uh, is the big brother to my favorite uh, Sabenza, my small Sabenza 21 Micarta inlay in single blade with blue hardware. Um, and I ordered this knife in February of 2019, received it in November. Um, I waited nine months and 10 days for it and I love it. It's been in my pocket every day. Um, and I intended this to be my everyday carry. It was a knife that I had been dreaming about for a very long time. Uh, and then shortly after I ordered it, um, I found out that the Sabenza 21 was going to be discontinued and it was going to be replaced by the Sabenza 31. And I thought about it and I said, well, um, I should have a large because I don't have a large Sabenza 21 or 31. So I ordered a 31, a plain uh, Sabenza 31 on the day they became available on the Chris Reeve website. And uh, uh, miracle of miracles, um, in the first production run for private orders, mine was one of the ones. So this was this is actually the Canada 131, the first uh, Sabenza 31 made for uh, an individual order uh, or production um, order for a Canadian. So uh, this one got a name. Uh, and um, But when I ordered that, uh, Steve from Thunderbird Gear um, uh, asked uh, why I wasn't buying from a Canadian company. And uh, I thought about it and then I thought, well... Um, yeah, uh, I have bought my first two Chris Reeve knives from a Canadian company and, uh, I thought, well, um, my last chance to get a Sabenza 21 large, um, and funny, funnily enough, uh, I ended up getting a bunch since, but, um, I decided I wanted a big brother to this one, a large Sabenza 21 with my card inlays and blue hardware to be, um, my daily carry for when I go uh, out in the woods or hiking or camping or whatever, as opposed to this one, which I carry in the city every day. Um, so I ordered one and this knife actually arrived on New Year's Eve 2019. And um, let me just show you before I open. Um, so this, uh, this knife has been in my hands already and I actually filmed a video, but uh, I kind of got... Um, a little bit bummed uh, because there was an error. And uh, uh, so it was sent back on January 2nd um, to go back to um, Chris Reeve workshop in Boise, Idaho um, to have um, silver lugs replaced with blue because I wanted the blue hardware. Um, so uh, let me just uh, uh, explain what comes with um, a knife when you order from Thunderbird Gear. He uh, always loads up your package with a bunch of stuff. Um, so there's a field notes notebook, and this was in the box when I first opened it. Um, he throws in a business card uh, as well as a discount code card, which, um, uh, you know, if you order one, you'll receive one. Um, there's also, you know, Thunderbird Gear sticker, uh, Canadian Knives and Gear sticker, which um, is a Facebook group, uh, but it's open to any nationality. If anyone's interested, just uh, search on Facebook for Canadian Knives and Gear. Um, so he includes a sticker for that group. And I actually, when I sent this back, I kept this stuff out and I kept the Chris Reeve sticker out of my little, my little folder. Um, so... 
Um, but I sent back the folder because um, they were going to obviously um, edit the card or update the card when they put um, the blue hardware um, into it. Um, and I'm going to just put that aside. And there's a couple of other things. There was a, an error with... Um, so this is the standard... Um, the standard stuff you get with um, a Sabenza, which is the um, a fluorinated grease lubricant and an Allen key um, for taking it apart. And this is actually the lanyard um, bit for uh, my Sabenza 31 because my 31 was delivered with the wrong color lanyard. So they threw that in the box. Uh, and then they gave me an extra lanyard um, just because of the trouble, and I appreciate that. Um, like I said, Chris, Chris Reeve Knives, um, service second to none. A customer service team is great, and I think I've spoken to every one of them on the phone at one point or another. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I sent it back um, to be repaired, and then I waited because um, I thought, well, rather than deal with customs, we'll just have it sent back to Thunderbird Gear, um, with one of their shipments and then Steve from Thunderbigger would send it to me, which he did along with the other knife you saw me pull out of the box. So let's just open up the, the Chris Reed burrito, um, which like I said, I've seen this one before, but, um, it was here for a brief visit of, uh, two nights and then it was sent back. So, uh, here we go with the blue hardware on it now. So lovely. Now I know a lot of people, um, buy Chris Reeve knives, whether it's a 21, a 31, or um, an Inkosi, uh, and they will deliberately wear off the blue uh, because they don't like the blue for some reason. I love the blue, and I don't mind it wearing because I think that's the complaint is that um, once you get your hands on it and you start using it a lot, you wear that anodization off and it starts to turn silver. But that's something I like. I don't mind it, that it's going to gradually change from blue to silver. Um, if I wanted silver, I would order silver from the get go. Um, and you can do that. So I don't understand the people that order blue and then deliberately use some sort of, um, material, uh, like, or like flits or, or some other solution to remove it on their own. Um, but that's a personal choice and they're welcome to do that. But um, I personally love that blue. I love that color and uh, I don't mind wearing it off. So I wanted the blue. So um, I sent it back. But this was my first encounter with a large Sabenza 21. Now, I own a, a large Sabenza 25 um, and... For some reason, every time I, I get a new Sabenza, a new Chris Reeve knife, and take it out of the box, uh, I learn something that I didn't expect because I don't have a, a knife store in my city that carries Chris Reeve. So every Chris Reeve I've ever touched um, has been my own. Um, and the first time I ever touch it is out of the box. So this was the first large Sabenza 21 I touched. And um, I didn't have it for long before I sent it back. So... Um, the one thing that I, that I noticed, I mean, the blade shape, uh, when I first got my first small Sabenza, which was the uh, small uh, Coco Bolo inlaid, and I got this um, three and a half, almost coming up on four years now, um, was how slender the blade was. I wasn't, I, I was expecting it to be a little bit uh, beefier or wider, um, uh, and it's actually a very slender uh, uh, blade. Um, so I guess that didn't surprise me then when I got my first large, which was this one. Um, and I guess I'd also had the 25. So I was used to the, the size of that one, but actually the blade on the 25 seems to me beefier, but that, because it's wider. Um, but the point is the thing that, that, um, stood out to me about the large with the micarta is how flat, the micarta inlay seemed. And I figured out um, uh, after I sent it back was the micarta inlays on the large are just the same thickness as on the small, but the um, uh, they're obviously a lot uh, wider. So they have a much flatter feel, even though you do get the same sort of relief from the titanium. Um, and the two knives, the blade stock, although it's hard to tell um, when you look uh, on 
on camera or down from above, but the blades are actually the same width. Um, so the spacing between the titanium uh, handles is the same, but the um, obviously the th handles themselves are thinner. Um, so there's just a different feel to the large. Um, and I think I have figured out um, that uh, I prefer the large with the micarta. Um, but I, that's another video for another day. Um, but both these knives are now like little brother and big brother, and they're part of the family, which includes the Canada 131. And I actually have names for these knives. I'm going to name them. Um, but that's to come in another video as well, because I am going to put uh, Jekyll to Hyde uh, backspacers on them uh, with a lanyard. And when I do that, then I will reveal um, why these are special to me and what, what they're going to be named. Um, but uh, so I have sort of like, I have a, uh, this is the sort of the core of my Chris Reeve collection and the ones that I carry every day. Um, this one uh, I've been carrying almost every day. The, the large 31 I've been carrying almost every day since I got it as a secondary carry. This one, the small in single goes in my pocket um, of my trousers and the large 31 is usually in my jacket. Um, uh, so uh, then what happened after I sent this one back? So I only had a large Sabinza 21 in my hand for, for, like I said, less than 48 hours before I sent it back. Uh, it is um, something became available that caught my eye, and it was this one. And let me move these out of the way so you can just, they're not getting in the background of this beautiful blade. But I saw a photograph of this very knife online, and that's a large Sabinza 21 um, natural micarta inlay with raindrop Damascus. And this is the Chad Nichols uh, raindrop Damascus. So uh, I saw this and I thought, oh, that's a gorgeous knife, but I have my, my you know, large black micarta S35VN blade on the way. Um, and then I saw, okay, <laughs> something about this knife that pushed me over the edge. Aside from how gorgeous it is, um, this is the birth card for this knife. Um, so I saw the date, uh, December 17th, and I said, oh my God, it's the, it's the twin brother of the black one that I sent back um, to have the blue hardware put on. Um, so I thought, well, I've got to have it um, as the twin brother. Um, and I have a name for this one. It's silly. I called it Artie because of the raindrop, RD. Get it? Uh-huh. And um, so um, I think this is the the family. Now, the, the other significant thing, okay, aside from the fact that I got uh, Canada's first production um, for a private order, um, Sabenza 31, um, which was made on January 8th, the first production run for individual orders was uh, January 7th and 8th, 2020. Um, but uh, these two were made on the first production run of the Sabenza 31. So they made a run on the 17th of December, 2019. Um, it was the first production um, Sabenza 31s, aside from the ones that pr were produced for Blade Show when they, when they launched in June of 2019. So these Sabenza 21s were the, f the first of the last, if that makes sense. They were made on the first, or uh, sorry, the, yeah, the first day of Sabenza 31 production. Um, uh, but they're sort of the first batch of the last batches of 21s. I hope that made that clear. Um, and uh, now being March uh, 9th, 2020, as far as I know, the uh, production of Sabenza 21s is done now, or if not, it's very close, like it'll be this week or next, because um, in late January or early February, um, Tim Reeve put out a video that said they would be done Sabenza 21 production at the end of February. Um, so this, these two, uh, in addition to being made on the same day, uh, were made on the day that the first production batch of 31s were made. And those produced on the 17th of December, um, the 31s went to dealers. So um, 
uh, there are people that have um, December 17th Sabenza 31s. And then the first ones that they did for private orders were January 7th and 8th, 2020. And that's where this one came from. Uh, so that's, that's the situation. I don't know if there's anything else I need to say about this. Um, like I said, the, the, uh, thing I will probably end up doing in, in the near future is, um, talk about, um, my comparison of having my carta inlays versus not. Um, but I'm very glad to have sort of these two, uh, side by side, big bro and little bro, which are probably going to get the bulk of my pocket time, my my pants pockets, whereas the 31 goes in my jacket pocket as sort of my secondary uh, blade. And it's a celebrity being the Canada one 31. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I was sad to put this in the mail the day that I got it, but it looks gorgeous with those blue thumb lugs. Uh, <laughs> I'm really pleased with with that and uh plus i got to talk to the uh chris reeve customer service team a couple of times and they're always fun to talk to a great bunch of people um so i hope you found that interesting and um tune in again next time thanks a lot bye bye hey i'm back and you know why too because every time i do a video i always forget uh to do the little cut test so <laughs> and I always stop the stop the camera, look around and see that I had a piece of grocery receipt <laughs> ready to be sliced. <laughs> um, so anyway, so here it is back from the Chris Reeve workshop uh, with the new uh, uh, correction to the hardware. And uh, I think the first time it came, I don't think I bothered slicing. So as far as I know, this is factory sharp. And when uh, I should mention, if you send a Chris Reeve knife back to the factory or the workshop, um, as I call it, um, for any uh, warranty work or maintenance work, they uh, will not let a knife leave without being up to their specifications. So it should be uh, with the factory sharpened edge. Um, and I'll just, uh, oh, look at that. Very, very sharp. Um, um, impressive. Uh, the sharpest Chris Reeve uh, out of the box that I own was my kitchen knife, the Sakayo. Um, this is a close second, uh, I must say. Um, the uh, I will add that the uh, up until uh, a couple of weeks ago, this Raindrop Damascus was the smoothest opening and shutting out of the box that I've had. Um, and I don't know if it's because it's Damascus, um, but I have another Damascus that's very hard to open. Um, but this, the detent is very soft. Um, I mean, it holds fine. I mean, I can't, uh, well, I guess I can break the detent by holding onto the blade, but it's not gonna like, you know, fall open uh, by mistake but it has just a very smooth opening on the detent and on the lock and unlocking is extremely smooth. And this is the smoothest uh, opening and closing uh, Chris Reeve knife I own uh, until I got my uh, Manandi, and, um, which is also a Damascus. And uh, this is just, you don't feel it at all. I mean, this you can, you know, they say it's not a one-handed opening knife with the new nail nick but i can grab it by the by the nick without pushing against the the handles and it'll just drop right open if i flick my wrist um it's uh super super smooth and unlocking and closing the blade uh, the way i describe it is it's elegant uh all the way uh elegant to open and break the detent open it unlock and close it uh very smooth operating um but uh, as far as sharpness goes, say <laughs> this is a very close second to my Sakayo. Um, impressed. Um, now it's tearing a bit as as my my receipt gets uh, mangled. But yeah, look at that. That's uh, that's all cut. That's not tearing. Um, yeah, impressive. Anyway, uh, as usual, I had to come back and add the little bit at the end of the video. Um, Thanks again. So long for now.